I remember when I was but a wee lad, I saw Rikishi do the Rikishi driver. My word, that was a thing of beauty. It was also super dangerous, which you can figure out when you see it, so surprise, surprise, it got banned. It made me sad, but yeah, I get it. So I decided why should I be the only person upset today in this house, and therefore I am Simon What Culture. Please do subscribe. This is 10 amazing wrestling moves. You will never see again. Number 10, the Deadly Beverly Brothers. So this actually ties in because one of the first tag teams I ever saw were the Beverly Brothers. Years later, I would learn that their manager, the genius, was the macho man Randy Savage's brother. And man, what a ride that was. Nothing will ever compare to their finisher, though, because good grief. Known as the Shaker Height Spike, the Beverly's would push their opponents into the ropes. And when they came back to them, Mike Enos threw them up in the air as Wayne Bloom grabbed their head and just hurled it right into the mat. I mean that literally too, this poor person's skull would just go headfirst into the floor. It's the main reason you'll never see it again, because eventually somebody was going to die, and that's not hyperbole. It was like The Undertaker giving a human a tombstone for real. And yeah, sure, it did work, because nobody would ever get up from that, but we are talking about the world of the predetermined. There we have control. You don't need to do this. Number nine, Shane McMahon's Coast to Coast. So given that it is Shane McMahon, he'll likely prove us wrong. Dude is crazy. Look at the stunts he's done over the years. Sadly, though, when he did make a very surprise return at WrestleMania 39 to get into it with The Miz, the McMahon family curse struck and he tore his quad when coming back down from a leapfrog. People were quick to laugh about this, and it is funny in the sense that it makes no sense. But it's still somebody getting hurt. There's no humor in that. As it was a while ago, I hope he's okay. If he does decide he's not done, though, let's hope he tries to keep things simple doesn't climb one turnbuckle before leaping across to the other and drop kicking somebody in the face, which was indeed his coast to coast. I mean, not even Rob Van Dam should be doing that anymore. There's gotta be a limit. Credit to Shane though, because back in the day he would nail this maneuver and surprised us with his agility. I would just rather we tried to put our health first. Never happens in wrestling. Once would be nice. Number eight, Randy Savage's top rope neck snap. Now, obviously, very sadly, Randy Savage can't do this again. And given how wrestling has evolved, I'm not sure it would even work in the modern day. With that said, if somebody wants to try it, I think you should. This was cool. We also don't talk enough about how ahead of his time the Macho Man was. This was very much out of the modern book of wrestling. Because Savage would get his opponent in the right position, sprint towards the ropes before bolting over the top and snapping his enemy's neck into these things. The fact he landed on his feet made it even better. That guy could then bounce back like they were dead, and I suppose one reason we don't see it is because other moves are just much more brutal in 2023. But still, I will reiterate, if somebody can do this, they should. Could even throw a dig it in there as a wink wink nudge nudge. Number seven, the Powerplex. So FTR have ensured they continue the Powerplex's legacy today, and it's amazing. Cash and Dax are all time, and they're only gonna get better you can smell it. Power and Glory were the guys that brought this to the dance years ago, and the real twist was the timing of how they did it, which was, of course, dangerous. That's just how we did wrestling back then. Because after Hercules suplexed his foe off the top rope, Paul Roma would go in for the splash before these two had even hit the mat. That's right. It meant at one point, all three dudes were in the air. It just meant from time to time this went wrong, because that needs to be perfect, otherwise, yeah you smash into each other. That's why FTR do it the way they do, and that should never change. We've learned, we've moved on. It's still a wonderful move. Number six, the heart punch. So we go the other way now. This really has become too silly. Arguably made famous by Stan Stasiak, it does exactly what it says on the tin. When you're good and ready, you ball up your fist, punch somebody right in the heart, and it affects the opponent's ticker so much, that's that. The guy dies, I think. When we do our research, it feels like Crush was the last wrestler to do this until he left the WWF in 1997. And the truth is, if we did try to do it now, some people would laugh. I shall raise the stakes, though, because why? I mean, we still accept the dreaded nerve hold or the abdominal stretch. And that sounds more like a yoga position. Surely the heart, which is the most important muscle in the body, should be fair game. I do think it's the name, mostly. We will have to change that. Heart punch sounds like a Mortal Kombat finisher. But still, I hope somebody takes the bait. Number five, chair shots to the head. I mean, this isn't strictly true, as sometimes we do still see them, though it's very rare in WWE. It's not meant to happen, but if one wrestler grabs a chair and hurls it at another, sometimes it's gonna smack you in the skull. The chair doesn't know it's not meant to. Ultimately, though, the industry has moved away from these, and good. We know so much more about brain trauma and concussions that going back to how it was would be offensive. 
It is super dangerous to hit somebody in the head as hard as you can with a weapon. Even if the other person does get their hand up, the hand is not a shield. I always think the health of the performers has to come first, but that doesn't mean I don't get it. There was a certain cool factor to these until you remember the risk they come with. I think the last time it was properly obvious in WWE was at WrestleMania 27 when Triple H and Undertaker ignored the ban, but they also got fined. So yeah, probably best to continue heading in the direction we are. Better to be safe than sorry for sure. Number four, Hulk Hogan's leg drop. I mean, Hulk can surely never wrestle a match again due to his back being mush, but that ties in. The reason it is so bad is due to spending three decades jumping in the air and landing on his coccyx. It did him no favors. The last time we saw it was in 2007 when Hogan dropped the iconic leg on the big show of all people. I doubt anybody knew that was that. If anything, we didn't realize the damage it was doing. It seemed so tame. Nope. There's modern evidence to back this up as Randy Orton is currently suffering from serious back issues too due to the RKO. But once again, he's just landing on it over and over again. So even when you do think some moves are safe, remember, they are totally not. Which is terrifying, really. What does that mean for the guys who are doing maneuvers ten times more crazy? I really hope they're just okay. A lifetime of pain is not going to be fun. Number three, the violent choke. June 7th, 2010. What a day this was. The Nexus had arrived in WWE and decided to go crazy in what was one hell of an angle. Daniel Bryan especially wanted to cause carnage, so took Ring out to Justin Roberts' tie, and he choked him with it. WWE clearly loved this too, because they got the most head-on camera shot you've ever seen, until it went bad. The sponsors weren't too happy with what was essentially attempted murder on the air. When they wanted repercussions, it meant Daniel got fired. And that was mad. He was told to go nuts. Thankfully, he was brought back once the fire had calmed down, but this became a hard and fast rule in the company. You do not choke people in a way that seems like you're trying to kill them. Otherwise, people like Mattel will definitely get upset. I'm not sure we've ever seen it done so blatantly ever since either. So there you go. What a wild week. Number two, Triple H's pedigree. Because very sadly, the man had to retire from nowhere. It sucked. When the news came out Triple H had suffered a heart attack, the worry was very real. Even more so when Paul Levesque did a Sintan interview with Errol Hawani and said that, yeah, he almost died. Good grief. The emotion was real, as was the news he had to retire, which did mean one of the best ever never got a proper send-off. No way the game didn't think he had a few WrestleManias left in him. A reason not to. Thankfully, the likes of Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes keep the memories alive as they use this, and I'm sure at some point Triple H would do it for an angle, maybe even on Cody. That'll send people off. But if you do want to see this in a match again, bye, Triple H. It's not happening. That's been taken away from us forever. Number one, the Dudley boys go for the groin. It didn't matter whether the Dudley boys were face or heel. At some point during a match, they were going to go to the top rope and smash some guy right in his penis with a headbutt. I mean, they always got a reaction, so why not? You will remember this too, because Bubba would hold the legs as Devon came off the top. In retrospect, this shouldn't have been allowed. Surely it's a disqualification. There is a twist here, though, because originally we included this after Devon Dudley suffered a stroke and essentially retired from the ring, even saying in interviews that he was done. Makes sense. However, recently the Dudley boys revealed that they shall be reuniting for a match in Impact, so one day, we may actually get it again. I mean, I hope they don't do it if it's not conducive to everybody's health. And they do have plenty of other tricks in their arsenal. But you know, if they do bust it out, everybody's gonna cheer. Why end this list boringly, though? So we have thrown a controversial one into the mix. And as soon as you do see it, I know what you're going to do. You're gonna come back and leave a comment and call me a liar. So that's egg on my face. Now continue to spam the comment section as well. Before you like the video, share the video and subscribe. And look at your television screens right now. You'll see another video. Give it a click. You can also see more articles like this on whatculture.com and the channel itself. Plus you can follow us on social media at whatculturewwe and simon316. But now make sure you go out there and smile at the sun and see what happens. The answer is nothing. The sun doesn't know you're smiling at it. It's millions and millions of miles away. But we're here now. Goodbye.